It was January 26 of 2006 when a guy named Yasuhise Hara made a manga called this. And because of that, a couple things happened. First, it was this, and then it was this, and then this, and then this. Let's just be honest with ourselves. Nobody ever plans for things to turn out a certain way. I didn't think that reading 10 chapters of this manga for a video would get me so hooked that two months later, I've read all 744 chapters and now I feel like an addict always wanting more and more. All of this made me want to ask three questions. Questions that in the beginning I thought would be relatively easy to answer, only for me to quickly realize I was about to enter the everlasting abyss that is the internet. The first question was how? How do we get from a drawing of two stupid kids to these people, these sales, these memes, and these fans? And a view count that puts my channel to shame on pretty much anything related to it. The second question was why? Why do people like me and so many others become so obsessed with these things? And not just Kingdom, but literally anything having to do with Yasuhise Hara. And authors whose name is in the Guinness Book of World Records for having the manga written by the most people. And that leaves us with the third question. The third question is so hard to answer that I'm still not even 100% sure if it's right or not. I ended up going through and researching everything there is to know about Yasuhise Hara. So much so that I can confidently say I know him better than he knows himself. The weirdest part about this whole experience is that I never put this much effort into like a book report or a research project for school, you know, the stuff that would actually benefit me. No, in my crazy masochist mind, I did all of this to answer a single question. I'm so far into this journey where I practically become Yasuhise Hara. Am I crazy for that? I'll leave that up to you. If you clicked on this video thinking I was about to summarize to you 700 and 44 chapters worth of pure peak fiction that is kingdom i'm sorry believe me when i say this video is going to be much much weirder now sit down relax make yourself comfortable grab a snack maybe even something to clean your eyes because i promise by the end of this video <laughs> you may regret it so drop into this very long and weird and messy journey where we uncover everything that happened before january 26th of 2006 and everything after with the first question being what the fuck is going on, man? And if I had to take a guess, I would say it started somewhere with this man. Believe it or not, before this man Yasuhise Hara graced our eyeballs with Kingdom, he was actually known as that guy who was the assistant to arguably the best mangaka of all time, Takehiko Inoue. Yes, the man who created Slam Dunk and Vagabond had the man who created Kingdom working as his assistant. And before that, he made some very interesting one-shots. One thing I respect about Yasuhise Hara is that he knew from the beginning what kind of manga he wanted to create. Even all his one-shots before the serialization of Kingdom had the same feel as Kingdom. But one of the hardest questions you can ask is who exactly is Yasuhise Hara? There were only two things that people knew about him. One, through his one-shots, he was able to gain the respect of Takihiko Inoue. And two, to the average manga reader, this guy was a complete mystery. I've scoured long and hard through almost every interview, every video of him, mentions of mangaka he's worked with, and even then, there's still not a whole lot. I would definitely say that reading his one-shots is an experience. It's actually really cool to see the literal blueprints of Kingdom, the art, the characters, the similar origin stories. Some of the same events in these one-shots were later incorporated into Kingdom, and it's just such a trip to see Yasuhise Hada's early works be so familiar to me even when I never read them before. Like this one shot called Horse and Wine for 300 Soldiers. This story was later incorporated into Kingdom, but this one shot gives us all the details. Like the miscommunication error between the King of Kin and the Mound Tribe people mistaking the gesture for asking this gorgeous Mound girl's name and the Mound Tribe people instead interpreting that as an okay to eat their horses, which would actually later prove to be a very, very good thing. During the course of reading Yasuhise Hada's work, I found myself wondering over and over again, who the hell makes something like this? Publicly, he's only ever written four one-shots and then Kingdom. Of course, he studied and worked under other mangaka, but still, with only five stories to his name and all of them being this good, I'm confident when I say that this guy is a prodigy. The best way I would describe Yasuhise Hada is that he is like 
like a raging bull who just powers through everything without a single care in the world. I liked his one shots, I really did, but comparing those to his current work is like light and day. But it was the little things here and there that made reading something from Yasuhise Hada feel so unique. The storytelling, the intensity, the simple comedic moments that have you grinning like an idiot. And I think nothing highlights this feeling better than his one shot called Congo, where the vibe is very much the same that of Kingdom. But in this telling, Shin has a sister who's like the prototype of Cairo 10. Shin also has a mother in this story, so he's not a war orphan. He meets Sei by pure coincidence at a swordmanship academy, where Shin just beats the ever-living shit out of him simply because he hates nobles. Sei still has that same tragic backstory. It's very similar in a lot of ways to Kingdom. It's evidently clear in this one shot that the theme is you should never judge a book by its cover. And it's just such an extreme way to go about expressing this idea. Like Shin and Sei had this whole story going on and I was just like bro this is a one shot. This should not be that good. While most of his works are very simple, I find it so intoxicating to read. His way of writing is very fluid and when it comes to characters, there is not a single type of character this man cannot create. Because if there's one thing you were guaranteed when reading something made by Yasuhise Hada, it was that you were going to enter a place that no other mangaka has explored. But Yasuhise Hada didn't just start off as a prodigy mangaka. He was drawing and writing at a really young age, but nothing really ever took off. It got to the point where he was actually working as a salary man for quite a while. But in an interview, he said he was actually very grateful for the experience because if he was a student who went straight into becoming a mangaka, he doesn't think he would have created Kingdom. And even if he did create it, it would have been about who's stronger and who's weaker. And we are for ever grateful that shit did not happen. But I actually like to think that because there's still so much mystery as to what kind of person Yasuhise Hara was, that made reading his work all the more compelling. It was almost like the only way you could understand him better was by reading his work. Yasuhise Hara's journey to becoming a award-winning mangaka that he is today is very intriguing. Do you know the reason why he went to work as an assistant to Takehiko Inoue was because he was actually nervous for Kingdom being greenlit. He was so nervous because this was his first ever manga being published in a magazine and it was also on weekly releases. So Yasuhise Hara's assistant made him work for Inoue for a couple of months to give him an idea of what the process is like. It was actually Inoue himself that gave him the confidence boosted he needed and complimented him on his works. And receiving a compliment from Takehiko Inoue is no small thing. That man is basically hailed as a god in the manga industry. And the magazine Publishing Kingdom was no small magazine. Weekly Young Jump has titles like One Punch Man, Tokyo Ghoul, Gantz, Kageyasama, Golden Kamui, Climber, Chojin X, and All You Need Is Kill and Real, another manga written by Takehiko Inoue. So safe to say his worries were valid, but from today's viewpoint all those worries seem so inconsequential. And what he would end up doing next? would cause one of the biggest stirs that the manga industry has ever seen. So far into this video, we have managed to answer the questions, who is Yasuhise Hara, and what was all this heebie-jeebie before January 6th of 2006. And now we will be shifting over into the next segment I like to call Manga Mindfuckery. Kingdom is a story full of characters that when given the chance, you will fall deeply in love with. With my personal favorite character being Oki, the man that is literally portrayed as a war god, and the fan favorite at this point being Konki, just because of what an absolute menace this guy is. He is a truly terrifying opponent that is known all throughout China for just being a fucking savage. Another one that's considered to be a fan favorite is Mountain, the son of Mobu, who is also the complete opposite of his father. He's smart and calculating on par with that of already a great general, but is also very friendly and outgoing, and he's an up and coming general just like Shin. Depending on who you ask, Kingdom is known for a lot of things. Maybe you've seen it through memes or fan art or cosplay or YouTube videos with a shit ton of views. Maybe you've heard it through the ridiculous amount of Kingdom crossovers on the internet, like Ichiro Oda, the author of One Piece, or Musashi Kishimoto, the author of Naruto, or Takehiko Inoue, or even Hirohiko Araki, the author of JoJo's, who all did a redrawing of the 26th volume. Yasuhise Hara came up with the concept of Kingdom after studying the Shiji records, which is basically a record of events that span 3,000 plus years of China's history, and he makes sure to keep a copy close to him at all times when writing Kingdom to keep the manga historically accurate. But 
But still, due to the lack of details in the records, Yasuhise Hara is still able to have a lot of creative freedom. You can tell from his one shots that Yasuhise Hara always knew what kind of main character he wanted to make. A main character who is unhinged at times, headstrong with a strong set of beliefs and a strong will to follow it. A caring boy who would turn into a man standing at the peak of military power. And what I know for a fact is that there is absolutely no way he could have expected the outcome of this single idea. The story of Kingdom takes place in China during the Spring and Autumn Warring States period, a great age of war lasting 500 years. And we are shown what life is like through the eyes of a teenage boy named Shin. Now Shin here is a lot of things. He is incredibly dumb. He's weird, and he wants nothing more than to make a name for himself that echoes all throughout China. And alongside him is his brother, Pyo, who's said to be just as strong as Shin. And these two pair up in hopes of becoming the greatest general under the heavens. These two are both war orphans, and although they're not related by blood, they have a closer relationship than those who are. But things start to go south pretty quickly after Pyo was recruited by someone in the Qin royal court to leave their small village and work at the royal palace. After a brief time skip, there are rumors swirling around that there's a rebellion taking place in the royal palace, and a merchant taunts Shim saying his brother is probably dead by now. A few panels later, and we see Pyo again on the verge of death. And it's hard to look at some of these panels because you can't help but feel bad for the life that was given to Pyo. Growing up as a war orphan, never getting to experience even the simplest joys of life with the only thing keeping him going is another war orphan and the promise between the two. All of his hard work and the grueling training, his 1,253 duels he had with Shin, only for him to end up dying on the ground because of someone else's troubles. And it's at the point where Pio already has one foot in the grave where he asks Shin two simple requests. The first one is to finish the mission that was entrusted to Pio, saying it was of great importance. And the second request is to take him a across the world, saying that from this point on they were one in body and soul, with those being his final words. And this became the end of a story about two war orphans and the beginning of what we all know as Kingdom, which is then followed up by some of the most emotionally captivating chapters I've ever read in my life. Two whole chapters of nothing but blood splatting, guts flying everywhere, and Shin losing his fucking sanity. You see him let out nothing but pure rage at this malicious world he was born into. All the people that looked down on him, never even knowing his parents and now losing the only friend he's ever had. And I remember the exact moment I first came across these pages for two reasons. The first one was I was reading this manga for a video where I was only supposed to read 10 chapters, but I accidentally ended up reading over 100 chapters. And while I was reading, I kept thinking to myself over and over again, I have no idea which title I enjoyed more, Berserk or Kingdom. The fact that there was a title out there that made me even compare it to Berserk was just so mind boggling to me. The second reason is a lot more personal to me. I think it was a matter of right place, right time, which led this manga to literally change my whole outlook on life. But because of that, now I kind of have this really weird relationship with this story. It's got nothing to do with it being good or bad or weird or me liking a certain character. And it's for those reasons I can't tell you what Kingdom is. I mean, I can, but what Kingdom is to me is way different from what the average average person would think of it. So instead of listening to me, listen to this. Fucking hell, this has 500 chapters. I'm just yeah. like, oh, for fuck's sake, right? Um, and then I read the first 100 chapters in like two days and I'm like, thank fucking God, <laughs> this has 500 chapters. It was, it was like one of those manga when I'm just like, yeah. I'm so glad that there is just like an infinite number of chapters. Yeah, Kingdom already in 200 chapters. I can see why people have it as a contender for the greatest manga of all time. Again, I still have a uh, big old berserk at number one, but I will definitely keep reading to see if Kingdom changes my opinion on that. Not only that, but listen to these facts. My anime list has it ranked the 11th best manga with a rating of 9. Kingdom has sold over 92 million copies. In 2015, Kingdom was the 5th best selling manga, 2016, 3rd best selling, 
2017, third best selling again, 2018, sixth best selling, 2019, third best selling, and 2020, second best selling, only behind Demon Slayer, and beating titles like One Piece, Jujutsu Kaisen, Chainsaw Man, and Haikyuu. 2019, Kingdom won Book of the Year in the Da Vinci Magazine, a very popular magazine in Japan. And it's won a lot of other shit, but just too much and too boring to talk about. This leads me to the second aspect of Kingdom that I noticed that a lot of people fell in love with, and that's its characters. Yasuhise Hara's ability to create so many characters, each with their own quirks and compelling storylines, is just a cut above the rest. In this manga, you have scumbags, idiots, psychopaths, and sometimes people like Baihi, who are just in a permanent state of fear over everything. Well, except for when he's drunk. And I think what has drawn so many people to love these characters is their weird sense of honesty about them. The soldiers and generals in this story aren't exactly the heroes of anything. As a matter of fact, most of them die, the first time we meet them. So, those who stand out aren't exactly normal people. And what I love most about this story is seeing what kind of person it would take to take the risk of joining the army and aiming to become a great general. And the same way we came to understand why Shin is the way he is, you slowly start to unravel why some of these characters are just so out of pocket. Why Kyokai's first reaction when she sees Ten feeling a little depressed is to grab her tits and try and cheer her up. And you meet a shit ton of characters that are all like that, whether they're general, soldier, or bandit. They all come in their own different shapes and sizes, with the one thing in common is them being extremely flawed people. Except for Heki, his only flaw is that he's just too damn normal. Other than that, he's perfect. And this idea becomes solidified in chapter 241 where one of Zhao's three great heavens, Renpa, explains exactly what kind of person it takes to become a great general. You need the willpower of a hundred, the strength of a hundred, the knowledge of a hundred, the experience of a hundred, and the luck of a hundred. All those traits were shared among the Zhao three great heavens and Ken's six great generals. And if you look at any of the characters who actually survive their battles, it almost becomes obvious. There are so many scenes where we see all these different types of generals going about war in their own way. Konki toys with the enemy armies until he sees a 100% method of success. Ozen always has the enemy armies dancing in the palm of his hand, always one step ahead of even the smartest characters. And while Shin, he just does whatever the fuck he wants. Even his own squad can comprehend him at times. I'm gonna be a little biased here, but if I had to pick one thing that I love about this manga, it's that I'm reading a story about broken people that feel like they're being healed when surrounded by one another. It's seen the three characters this story started with be each other's safe place, being a family like the ones they never had, even down to the smallest and dumbest little moments they share amongst themselves. Literally, one of my favorite scenes is when there was a civil war going on in the state of Ken, and the soldiers are hunting Sei's daughter, and Shin just appears out of nowhere, killing the enemy soldiers and lifts her up saying, I'm your dad's best friend. But I like to think that in some way, shape, or form, this incredibly weird cast of characters really started to resonate with a lot of people. I mean, spend more than three seconds on Twitter or Reddit and you'll just realize that there's a fan base for every single character, especially this one. I had no idea, but especially this one. The third reason is pretty self-explanatory. Kingdom is probably one of the most action-filled, fast-paced seinen manga that's out there. There are some fight scenes that have literally been ingrained into my memory, like this one, or this one, or even this one. Every single moment and everything in between is part of this wild, chaotic ride that is this manga. And that leaves us with the third question. The third question was so hard to answer that I ended up having to go through some of the most ridiculous tasks I've ever done in my life. The third and most ridiculously complicated question I've ever had to do while making a video, we know who Yasuhise Hara is and we know what led up to this point. But the final question that I had was, what in the actual fuck? Literally, like what the fuck is going on here? Kingdom has a very loyal fan base and an author that is just too damn good at his job and awards and sales too good to be getting shit like this. Why is Kingdom not actually talked about more? This is the hardest question I had to figure out by myself. It's because people don't want to start reading a manga with 744 chapters, but then I remembered that can be the answer because One Piece has like over a bajillion chapters by this point and is one of the biggest manga of all time. Then I thought maybe Kingdom is just a very niche anime, but with selling numbers like these, I'm just confused. Like how can it outperform some of the best titles in history and still 
never make it into the conversation of best of all time. I've looked on TikTok, YouTube, Reddit, Twitter, literally anywhere you can think of. And I've come to the conclusion that it's all your fault. You see, I wouldn't have to spend days of my life researching day in and day out about this manga and the author who wrote it if all of you just started reading it and talking about it or making some crazy ass fan art or some cringy cosplay. I don't care what you do, but Kingdom needs to be talked about more. At least I'm doing something by making this video to help spread the word of peak fiction that is kingdom but in all seriousness it's probably the anime's fault if we're being honest we all know that when it comes to a manga getting an anime it becomes an opportunity for the manga to become that much more popular and well that didn't happen. Let's be honest, it was doomed from the start with animation like this. I haven't watched the anime myself, but from what I've seen, the animation definitely gets better in the later seasons. There are some people on Reddit arguing which animation was worse, Kingdom or Berserk. Now, you have know you've hit rock fucking bottom if your anime is compared to Berserk's. There were some people calling season one eye cancer. Do you know how insulting that is to have someone say your anime is the equivalent to eye cancer? I don't even think eye cancer is a real thing. If there's a point I was trying to get at here is that when I see these memes, these cosplayers, these fans, and yes, even these fans, I can't help but feel like in that sea of people, there has been someone out there that feels the same way I do when I first came across this manga. I've been kind of beating around the bush about this, but I've been doing this because it's genuinely so hard for me to put into words how I feel about the things I love most. Because it's got nothing to do with how well written it is or how good of a story I think Kingdom is, I think it has a lot more to do with the fact that it just caught me by surprise at the right place at the right time. Yasuhise Hara has done something really special here and millions of people, including myself, have taken notice of his effort. And if I had the chance to say one thing to him, I would say, Thank you. Whether you started reading Kingdom because you were bored or for a video or you just wanted something to read, or if you still haven't even read it yet, if you have stayed with this story from chapter 1 to chapter 744, then I'm sure you feel the same way I do. And if you made it to this point in the video and you still find yourself struggling to understand where I'm coming from, that's that's okay. Maybe it's kind of cringe for me to become this emotional over some silly fucking drawings. And I just want to say, if you feel that way, you can go fuck. For real though, I totally understand where you're coming from and all I have to say is this. I hope that one day you experience that special moment in your life in the same way I did with this manga. It could be today, tomorrow, a year from now, whatever it is or whenever it is, I'm sure you'll have plenty more along the way.